Hello and welcome to this how-to video from eWard Winning Outdoors at eWardWinning94.wordpress.com. Today I want to show you another really simple fly that almost anybody can tie with just some very basic technique and equipment and skills. I showed you the other day the mop fly, which is a very easy one. Today I want to do a zebra midge. And this can simulate any number of small larvae that might be living uh, on the bottom of the lake or river or stream or within the water column. They're very popular, super simple to tie, require almost nothing special. Uh, I've got here, uh, I'm actually using a number 10 mid or nymph hook. A nymph hook has a little bit more curve to the shank than a, a typical hook. I'm using a number 10 that's really way bigger than you would normally use for a zebra midge, but by being bigger, it also makes it a lot easier to see on the video. Normally, this would probably be a 16, 18, 20, maybe even smaller um, hook that you would use. So I'm going to start. I've got my bead already on the hook because it, I always fumble around with beads and it takes me a little while to get them on in place just with fumble fingers and you don't want to have to watch that. So I'm going to wrap a little bit of thread around it to hold the bead in place, snip off my extra, and then I've got a little piece of copper wire here. And you can use other material, copper, oops, well, dropped my wire on the floor there, so I paused so you didn't have to watch me fumbling around for that. But you can use other colors. I'm using copper because it's got that gold color that matches the gold bead I'm using. I'll place it right behind the bead there and get some more thread wraps to kind of hold that in place. And then I'm just going to start wrapping thread all around the shank of this hook pretty well into the curve of the hook, more so than you might for some other types of flies. And once you get back into that curve, then you're going to start working your way back forward. And at this point, it's just going to be a back and forth. What you're trying to do is build up a tapered body that's fatter behind the head and then gets narrower down to the point where at the back, it's just basically the shank of the hook width. And so it's going to take a little longer on this demo than what it normally would just because I'm using such a big hook. And that's going to require more thread to get the job done than if I was using a more traditional sized hook for this. So I'm just going to kind of do this pretty quickly to get some of the body built up and then I'll show you something else here. If you're using fly tying thread, you know, sewing thread is basically like a miniature rope. It's got three different strands twisted together. Um, to create the thread. Fly tying thread is almost more of a flossy type of material so you can actually let it kind of unravel a little bit and if you do that what it will do is it'll flatten out and when you're trying to make a, a body like this and you want to make it nice and smooth that flattened out thread actually works really nice for that and you probably can't see that level of detail in the video but it actually looks like it's unraveled into two or three different little strands and that's perfect for what we're trying to do here to just build up a nice smooth body. And I'll have to stop two or three times and twist there to get that effect to continue because obviously as we get more into the thread on the spool I haven't done that with it yet. So we're getting pretty close to where I want to be on that body. Just a little bit more trying to make it nice and smooth and even. And one thing with any kind of fly tying People who are serious about fly tying tend to be very proud of their work, justifiably so. It's a unique art form besides being useful, but it really is a form of art. So there's a pride in having as perfect a fly as what you can tie, and I'm all for that. I'm a believer in taking pride in what you do. If something's worth doing, it's worth doing right. At the same time, if you tie something that's really ugly, don't beat yourself up for it. Either throw it away and start over, or take it out and catch fish on it. Some of the ugliest flies I've had, um, I had a couple times recently where I had a fly that was so ugly I was going to throw it away and hope nobody saw it, but it was the only one of that style I had, so I fished with it and caught a fish. So I've got the copper wire coming out kind of the back end here, so now I'm going to start carefully wrapping that forward. And again, this is more of a matter of pride and artistry, but you want to try to keep it as even as you can. And what you're doing is you're creating kind of a segmented look to the body on this nymph. If you happen to get a little bit off, you can either back up and redo it, or you can say, you know what, the fish isn't going to measure that. I'm going to use it anyway. So that's just a matter of personal preference, whether you're doing it for artistic pride or just simply something that you want to catch fish on. I can assure you the fish doesn't care. 
but as an artist, you certainly may. So I got it up there. I'm gonna wrap two or three wraps around here to help hold that in place. I didn't leave myself much there because this is actually a leftover piece, but I'm gonna just kind of helicopter it off by twisting it around several times. That will break off right at the base there momentarily. There we go. Once that's done, I'm just gonna put a couple of half hitches on here to hold it in place. You can also use a whip finish tool here if you want. Um, great tool, you're really not needing at this point to build up any more of a head. But so half hitches work fine, but you can certainly use a, the whip finish tool as well. If you're not comfortable with that or not familiar with how it works, I've actually got another video on that, uh, a beginner's guide to how to use a whip finish tool. So feel free to check out my YouTube channel and find that video. Once you're done there, it should taper fairly gently from the back of the bead back to the, the shank of the hook. I'm going to finish this off with a drop of head cement here just to kind of help hold all that in place so it doesn't come unraveled. I had one of these I was fishing with in Colorado last fall that was completely coming unraveled. The thread was unwrapping, the wires were coming undone, and the trout kept biting it. Um, but we prefer to make them last longer if we can. One other thing you can do that some people like to do is they'll actually take some uh, solar resin and coat the whole body of it with solar resin and then hit it with your solar light to, to harden it. Um, it'll look about the same, but it does make for a much more durable fly that even if you get a few fish hitting it with sharp teeth, they survive. But that's it. That's the zebra midge. A couple options you can do for some variation. Most common that I've seen is black thread with, with gold or copper colored wire and gold bead, but you can switch out for a silver bead and silver wire. You can use different colors of thread. Um, this is probably the most accurate for trying to replicate, replicate some of the larvae that the trout might encounter in their native waters but maybe you want to do it some bright color, an orange or a red or something obnoxious colored that might trigger an aggressive strike or a defensive strike as opposed to somebody thinking it's food. So like with any fly, be creative, use your imagination, try some different stuff. Uh, maybe you're fishing for something besides trout and you want to go with a different color. Um, I was catching a smallmouth bass the other day on a yellow colored fly I had caught or had tied. It wasn't this one, it was the mop fly from a recent video, but that bright yellow color was very popular. So try different stuff, experiment, have fun with it, um, practice the artistry aspect of it, but if you booger it up, fish it anyway, and it'll probably work. So have fun. Uh, if you would, click the like button down below. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button, and that way you don't miss out on any of the stuff I have to offer. Thank you for watching.